Hey guys, before I start today's video, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Anunnaki Customs Facebook group. I'm on here as well. It's a good group. You can see what everybody else is doing with theirs. Some cool stuff going on. I'm posted on here as well. Oh, cool. He's got Nobby's on his Nobby. I'm posted on here as well. Also give a little shout out to Reckless Customs. They're doing some cool stuff. You see these plates over here? This replaces that ugly little guy up front. So they've got some different options. Definitely check them out. Join the group, post up, see what everybody else is doing. Thanks. Hey, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to do a quick overview and review of the uh, man of the box fender to leave for the Honda Navi. So you can opt to get this kit with or without the Yoshimiro micro, micro signals it's a little bit cheaper just to defender delete but then you're going to have to find some way to mount turn signals to it or to your bike i would definitely i went with the one with the lights uh looking at the quality of everything the work they put into it i would definitely suggest getting the light package as well so what you're going to get in the box is the actual is the plate bracket for your fender delete now in the box it's going to have a billet block, a mounting block attached to it with three number four Allen screws. Going through the billet block is two number six Allen screws. I've already removed the block and installed it on the bike but I'm going to show you guys how. So that's the basic package. If you opt for the lights you're also going to get a pack of Bike Master inline resistors which are going to be necessary. You're going to get a small package with some nylon nuts and washers to attach the lights to the bracket. This included in the package. They also put these uh, solder connections in here. And if you're not familiar with these, they're actually kind of nice. There's actually a easy melt, melt alloy in the center section of these. It has a glue strip on each side. And this whole tube is shrink wrap. So soldering your connection is always going to be the best bet. But splices are kind of the quick and easy. This is in between. So this is going to be better than a mechanical butt splice in most cases. Not quite as good as full solder. However, the advantage is this is a lot faster. You can do this with a, a cigarette lighter, heat gun, your wife or girlfriend's blow dryer, or your blow dryer. Anything that's going to give you decent heat. Now just be mindful, these are really designed to work with a heat gun. So... If you're going to put a flame to them, hold it back off of it. It does actually take a second for it to start melting. But once it starts, this alloy is going to start to melt into the wires. You're going to have both wires meeting here in the center. Once you do that, you're going to work your way out to the glue strips. That's going to give you a nice bond on both sides to keep it from pulling apart. And then make sure all the heat shrinks. Totally melted for your watertight bond. This is good for guys that are a little bit iffy about soldering stuff. Nice little addition into the package. You're also going to get in a box these Yoshimiro micro LEDs. Now they're not tubed or heat shrinked in the package. You're going to have exposed wiring. I took the liberty of putting some heat shrink on and sliding these uh, PVC tubes over the top just to make it look a little dressier. These are the nylon nuts and washers. To attach these to the bracket that's included in the kit, which I gotta say, the finish on this and this, they're fantastic. Uh, they really took their time when they were producing these. So, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the light, there's a hole in each side, it's a little bit of slit, you're gonna put the light through it. No, I'll just show you. Be a little bit easier if I just show you guys. So, let me back this back off a little bit. Like I said, I went ahead and did a test fit of everything before I started the video, just to make sure it's all going to work. Also, I had to do a little bit of ciphering on the wiring, but not a big deal. All right, so you can see there's a slot here for the wire to slip through. Slip it through, you push the light through. It's a little small and fiddly, but just take your time. You're going to put the washer on, run up this nylon nut, 
Now, even though the Yoshi ones, these are made out of what appears to be aluminum instead of plastic or nylon like the really cheap ones are, you still don't want to wrench down on these things like crazy. Just uh, get them real snug. And you don't want to over tighten them right now because until you get it on the bike, you don't know exactly how these are going to orient. So leave a little bit loose because you're going to play with it. Level it out. So you can attach both lights to this bracket. Now, some of you might have noticed, well, this isn't just two wires. That's because the Yoshis aren't just turn signals. They can function as just turn signals if you wish. And to do that, all you would do is connect the negative, which is your black, and the blue, which is the turn signal function. Excuse me. These two, on their own, it'll work just as a basic turn signal. However, this white wire is a running light, and the red wire is a brake light. You can wire all these into the Navi. I'm going to show you the basics of how to do this. So, if you wanted to stop at just turn signals again, blue and black, that's all you need. If you wanted to add the running light, add the white, add the brake light, add the red. Uh, you got options here, which I, th I think is pretty nice. Any wires you're not going to use, you can just tuck away. It'll function with just the turn signals if you want. But I'm going to wire all of them up to show you how. I'm also going to do it in a way I normally wouldn't do. More of a, a temporary measure until I get some kind of connectors. And we'll come to that. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But to assemble all this... And I'm going to show you where the block is on the bike. It's pretty simple. But you're going to have to take this away. Take the block off of this. Right? Mount the block to the bike. And if you can see, these holes are for those number four Allen screws. The small hole is for your wiring to pass through. So it's going to sit on the back of the bike, kind of like this the plate holding your turn signals meets onto the back of it here. Now what's going to hold these together is the bolts from your plate. So you just, all you have to do is put the plate on here, run the bolts through, wash your nut on the back, tighten it up, this will all stay together. You don't need a tremendous amount of clamping force to keep this together. Um, if you were concerned, you could get a uh, some sort you get a very low profile screw machine screw put it here put a bolt in the washer on the back to just give it a little extra uh, you go crazy and put some 3m on there or some really glue to hold it together but I promise you the bolts from your plates gonna hold together just fine right. let me reset and I'll be right back all right I'm back Excuse the tape on the plate, guys. I don't mind you knowing what state I live in, but uh, I'd rather you not be able to track me down. Now, if you do send me something weird in the mail, at least make sure it's nice and expensive. I'd appreciate it. All right, so first step, like I said, I added the uh, PVC tubing heat shrink. You can, uh, you could run it without it. I, I just wouldn't suggest it. One, it's not going to look very nice. Two, it's a uh, you got exposed wiring or bare wiring in either way so from the bottom portion of the plate you're going to twist your wires together feed it through this small hole and I might have to adjust the size on this PVC tubing but we'll see I might have left it a little long and I did let's uh yeah let's trim about an inch, yeah, a little short of an inch off of it real quick. Make it look a little nicer. Alright, I'm going to trim a little bit off. Go ahead and take the other side off so it matches. Now, you can pick up this PVC tubing at uh, Harbor Freight 
pretty much uh, anything like AutoZone or Riley's. I, I actually scavenged this off of something else that I didn't need. So that worked out. All right. Cool thing is it already had a bit uh, bend into it that it's going to work out just right. So that should be a better looking length. Uh, you could leave a bunch of wire hanging out of the back of this if you want. I, I just want mine to look a little, a little cleaner. So I'm going to try to keep it as tight as I possibly can. Now I ran heat shrink over the top of the wires prior to installing the this PVC tubing because I wanted to uh, make sure none of the wire was exposed. It didn't show to give it a cleaner look and to help protect the wires, obviously. But uh, you could do this entirely with heat shrink. Um, now these are small wires. Uh, I believe they're uh, 22 gauge. Most LEDs are. It, if you wanted to put a thicker piece of heat shrink over it, what you can do is you can actually graduate them. You can go from a small piece, shrink it down, slip a larger diameter piece over it, shrink it down, and build it up. It also adds some rigidity to it as well. But uh, one piece and a piece of PVC works out pretty good. All right, so go back to where we were. We're going to tuck these wires through. Now this is a kind of a tight hole here and we're going to have a hard time following the wires to see exactly which one is right and left now and obviously we could test them in the bike or uh, pick a multimeter up to and find out but what i'm going to do save myself a little bit of time and trouble take a little piece of painter's tape put it over one side Now I know this is going to be the bike side left. It's going to be the left side of the bike. Anything that can save you a little bit of trouble is worth doing. All right. Like I said, twist them up real nice. Thread them through. It may take a couple of times, guys. This is a tight little hole. Giggity. <laughs> All right. Let's straighten this out just a little bit. Make it look nice. And I could go back and put a little bit of heat shrink here, but uh, nobody's going to see that. And I'm not worried about anything getting up to that tiny little spot right under the, the mounting portion not a big deal so like i said the way to put this all together is with your plate itself now i've got a pretty thick silicone pad and frame on mine but uh i did test fit it and it worked with it just fine i have that on there because where i live is a uh, it's extremely high humidity uh, it's very sandy. Not that it's going to rust a plate out that quickly, but uh, most of them are in some way plated or made out of aluminum now. But uh, sorry, bumping the camera there. It just helps keep the mess down. And this silicone is actually easy to wipe off. Plus, I don't like plate rattle. Um, I don't think you have an issue with plate rattle with this, but uh, never hurts to put a little bit of rubber or silicone between the plate and whatever you're mounting it to. So these are uh, these screws. Honestly, I can't remember the name brand of them. You can get them on Amazon. I think a four pack of them was like I don't know six bucks maybe. Couldn't have been much, but uh, it had some different colors too. I don't particularly know why I chose red. I think I had these laying around at the time, and I'd ordered some green ones, and they never. Yeah, that is right. The green ones never got here, so I stuck the red ones I had on a, another project on here. All right, so 
Give yourself a little bit of room. Now, and you could actually mount the plate first if you're struggling with clearance right here. But that's going on just fine. No problem. I'll say that as a struggle to get that threaded up. So leave them a little bit loose. This is your chance to kind of check where everything's going to fall. Take a look at the front here. Right. That looks like it's going to work just right. Cool. All right, I'm going to tighten this up, guys. And uh, next step, I'm going to get these resistors on. Give me a second. I'll be right back. All right, we're back, guys. So I'll show you a little bit of trick. I decided to go ahead and put a little bit of heat shrink over each end of this PVC. Now, to keep these wires from backing out of the plate, what I did is put both sets through one piece of heat shrink, shrink it down, put a wrench down the zip tie right here. That's going to keep the wires from backing out, looking sloppy. Now, at this point, you can choose to trim the wires. Uh, just be careful because uh, these are incredibly small. Um, I actually believe they're 24 gauge. I don't have wire strippers that size, but you can actually use a, a razor blade and just lightly drag it if you have to strip these back some more. But uh, if you choose to cut the wires, take this to your bike. You kind of hold it in place, see where the wires need to be. And I would advise if you do decide to trim the wires, just trim the turn signals at this point. Um, don't don't cut these just yet. The red and white until you know exactly how everything's going to run through the bike. So you're going to take one of your resistors. Obviously, you're not going to be able to squeeze a tiny little 24 gauge wire down in this connector. That's why they supplied these. So. What you're going to do is snip off the ends, these resist resistors, not the plug in, the receiving end. Slide that boot off. Don't need that anymore. Slide the boot back. Snip it off, just like that. And that guy can go. Keep these ends, they'll plug in. They're not the exact same size, I don't believe, but they'll work. So, this one is a 22 gauge wire, so it's pretty close. All right, just strip those back a little bit. Give yourself a little bit to work with. If you got a stray, just kind of trim them down a little bit. All right, so. We're going to take one of our connectors. Sorry, make sure you guys are still in frame there. Take one of our connectors. Now you can twist these end to end if you want, um, or you can push them together. But the idea, and this is going to be kind of eh, finicky, small wires are always. A lot of fun to work with. All right. So just kind of unravel this a little bit. Push them together, kind of interlocking them into each other. Give them a light little twist just to hold them together long enough to get this guy over the top. Definitely want to make sure these are the wires are sticking together when you push through. Try not to snag any ends. That's gonna fight you a little bit but it's not that hard. Take your heat gun Typically, these are meant to be melted at 300 degrees, but just kind of judge it, take your time.
don't put your heat gun directly on top of it. Kind of hold it back. It'll melt eventually. Now your glue and your heat shrink is probably going to melt first. Now if you have a more concentrated small torch, you can be a little bit more precise with this. It's gonna take a little bit. It's gonna take a little bit of time, guys. There's a small amount of flux contained in this stuff. You'll start to see it flow when it melts. And once you get heat all the way around, once it starts to melt, it, it goes pretty quick. Right, so the heat shrink's gonna be slightly oversized for the LED side. And that's okay. As soon as the blue strip make contact, we should be fine. All right, let it settle for a second. Now it's probably gonna wick up into the sheathing on the wire a little bit, that's okay. I give it a little tug. That's a nice connection. The glue made contact, settled. The heat shrink's a little on the big side, but this glue is gonna keep water ingress from happening. It should be fine. And this is a nice flexible joint. We're gonna do the same for the red side remember black to black for the turn signals you're going to be mating the blue to the red so I'm just kind of unravel it a little bit put your tube slide it over the top now you could put some uh, additional heat shrink over and that's probably not a terrible idea but this would be fine I don't, I don't see any issues. And if you do this and you decide to go back and put a little electrical tape over the ends, that's fine too. Nothing wrong with being extra safe with wiring, but I don't think we're going to have any kind of issues. You probably hear uh, Mrs. S.C. E. Navi in the background complaining about her job. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna pause this and I'll be right back guys All right guys, so I finished up Getting both sides soldered in Take your time with this and an important note when you're using these try to hold the, the wire level If you don't have any kind of clamping device Set the resistor down flat Hold the wire you're working on away from it and just kind of hold it as level as you can if you don't hold it level the uh, solder is going to flow all one way. It's going to flow downhill. So just bear that in mind. I am going to wrap this up a little bit. And put a little bit of painter's tape on here just to kind of get everything to stick together and make it a little easier to pass it through the back side of the bike. And remember I put tape on what was the left side. So what I'm going to do, uh, there we go, found a sharpie. This is the left side, so I know that going in. Now it's going to be my right side. All right, so the last bit of wiring we're going to do, if we choose to use the auxiliary brake light and running light, we're going to have to do in the bike. Now they provided enough connectors to do that as well um, so for now we're gonna mount the plate plug in the turn signals and make sure everything's working I'll be right back all right guys so we're on the bike side of things now so after you remove the seat you're gonna find this dust boot here slide it back there's a connector for your brake light all you have to do to get these apart Push down a little bit on this tab, slides right apart. You're going to see a blue and orange wire. One's coming from the left, one's coming from the right turn signal. I believe the, if I remember right, the orange was coming from the left hand side. There's going to be a single green wire, and inside this boot, there's going to be two connectors. 
That's your grounds for your lights for both sides. You're going to see two bolts here. If I remember correctly, I believe they were 14 millimeter. And on the bottom, if you look behind the plate, it's two Phillips screws on the bottom of the bike and it's plastic. Back those screws out because you're going to need this piece of plastic here to be able to wiggle up and down. You'll undo the bolts, push down on this black plastic, push down and slide back, and you'll be able to work the factory plate holder or fender out of there. After you've done that, I'll just go ahead and move you over there. After you've done that, you can see this billet plate here. Let me just pick you up. Sorry if it's a little shaky. This billet plate here, that was included with the man in box kit. So, there's two bolts, number six Allen heads. You're gonna run those through the same holes the factory fender was connected with and bolt this down. Once you've done that, you'll be able to mount the plate carrier directly to this mount. I'll reset up the camera so I'm not shaking everywhere and be right back. All right, we're back guys. So you're gonna feed your wiring through the gap here in front of the mounting plate. And you're gonna take your screws, get this flush, run them up one at a time and leave them kind of loose. Don't run up all your screws at once. And really that's just a tip for anything, whether it's this or a piece of Ikea furniture, what have you. When you're assembling something, don't, don't run your screws up. Get all the fasteners in, then run them up once everything's together. That gives you the wiggle room and the play you need to make sure everything's going to fit together like it should. So it's going to make sure you can get everything nice and square, nice and tight. So, once you got them ran in by hand, go ahead and run them up. Remember, this is a number four Allen. Get them nice and snugged up. You don't have to drive these home. You want to get them good and tight, but you're not going to have to put a ratchet to this or anything. I'm just using a shank driver this Allen if you're interested it's a little cheapo craftsman came with a toolkit I bought on the fly years ago I was on the road and needed a tool couldn't find that tool had to buy a cheap kit but got what I needed out of it I guess and this guy's handy. I've got a few of these different brands, but a nah, piece of plastic with a shaft on it. There's a piece of plastic with a shaft on it. All right, so this is why we left the turn signals a little loose. So we can turn them the way they need to be. Now we can eyeball this. Uh, you can put a level on it, which we'll, I'll probably do. Go back and do some fine adjustments, but just make sure you're pointed straight back. Alright, we'll set up up top, show you where to plug everything in. Alright guys, so it's mounted on the bottom. I've got my wires passed through. So for now, we're going to hook up the turn signals, give them a quick test, make sure everything's working. Alright, so Gonna connect your black into the green with the two connectors. Now these will fit, they're a little snug, but they will go in. Connect your red. Now if you're on the right side, that's gonna be to the blue. Alright. 
same with the other. Pick up the left side. And we're going to keep tape on the left side so I don't have to fight to remember which was which. Same thing. Plug these in. Now, important note, for, for no reason should it already be on, but don't have your ignition turned on. Don't have the bike running when you're doing this. All right, so that's connected. We'll go ahead and connect your brake light for now. Yeah, let's do a quick test. I'm sure you can hear that. And you can see it. It's hyper flashing, even with the resistors and resistors up front. So, let me check the front out. And the front's doing the same, the same exact thing. I didn't have that issue. So, we're going to have to figure that out. Why is this hyper flashing? with resistors in line. That's a little bit of a mystery. So we may have to change out the uh, flasher relay. So that's a distinct possibility. So for now, I'm going to hold off on this video. At the very least, you've seen how to install this. I'm going to do a little bit of research and I'll come back to a future video or determine exactly how to fix this hyperflash even with the resistors in line. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. It helps with the uh, YouTube algorithm. And appreciate the views and the support, guys. Later.